Um, what I want to share today is I want to sort of like this year I tried to take a different approach of uh, teaching Chinese uh, from starting from sort of linking the meaning to the characters and then after that we do a lot of speaking. So I hope like today what I've shared will be sort of like a different way of uh, sort of introducing Chinese at the beginning. So, um, so today my session I actually want to answer all these questions. So I mean within your table I think we can just have a little bit of warm up, just like two minutes talking about each of the questions and see what's and share. Anybody who has some like things you want to share with us about any of the questions? No? Should I nominate someone? Oh, I think Please, teacher. Yes, you have a good point. <laughs> did I? <laughs> yes, you did. Right, okay. I think the challenge I was facing was uh, that pupils found it extremely hard to memorize the characters. Uh, for simple ones from 1 to 10, they have no problem. Um, but uh, for the characters, they really struggle to see which part is which part. And sometimes they think the characters are left at and the right structures is the top and the bottom. They simply just can't distinguish which one's which one. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes? Very, very different from yes. other languages. Why? Okay, that's a good it's point. Correct. Very different. <laughs> Why? Why is it very different? No, uh, no letters. Yeah. 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 Like uh, a drawing. Cool. Great, and that gives to my next point, okay, your mind's fire, yeah. Okay, so I think, I think the most, the biggest difference between Chinese and other language, I think everybody knows, is because we have pinyin, we have characters, you have meaning. And I think the problem with this is, when you only have the sound and the meaning, it's basically just two-way roads, yeah? But when you also have the characters, that means you actually have six different ways of testing the pupils. So you have, can test them the pinyin, the character with the pinyin, the character with the meaning, the meaning with the pinyin, the pinyin with the character, you know, and all messed up. And I think that's the biggest challenge. I think people are faced at the very beginning when you introduce the characters. So my approach this year, I, I actually found this really, really powerful. Today I'm trying to persuade you to use it as well. Okay. So I propose when we introduce the um, the Chinese, I think the first thing you need to introduce is the character for the meaning. So not the character with pinyin and the meaning, or the pinyin with meaning. Because I think a lot of people find, okay, because characters are so hard, so we may avoid that at the beginning, and we do it later. But actually, when they start it, they start fresh. So they actually have better receptive ability. So, um, and this actually is what I found when um, we have other European languages, they have <coughs> a spelling bee um, competition. So they basically like say, all right, uh, they give the students a list of words and they ask the students, okay, you go home, you need to spell this out and they give you a certain time and you need to actually see how many you can spell in a minute or something. And so I started with giving them a list, giving them a list of words. And so each one of them, I, I actually don't stress the pinyin. The pinyin just is like for fun, okay? So the main point is they see the character and I explain every character what it means. It is very short. It can take like just 10 minutes and they can learn 38 characters. And you see like some of the characters, obviously I try to use the easy characters, so that has a meaning behind it. So they're kind of given like the multiplication of the characters and I feel like, oh, actually I learned the 38 letters very easily, okay? So after that, I will, so first of all, I will link the characters with the meaning. So for example, I will give them, okay, so this means you, I and woman with a child means good, so we have woman, we have child and stuff. And after that, once you link the characters with the meaning, so they already have this, 
you know, you can even ask them to explain. That's what we do, right? We ask them to look at the culture and they explain what does it look like, yeah? So they remember everything, like people with like two legs and stuff. And after that, we practice writing the characters. So by this time, they should actually know like the basic to order because that's how they can actually <coughs> remember to write the characters. So we practice writing the characters. And after that, we have the competition. So, I, so for example, I give them a the homework, so they go home and practice writing a little bit, yeah? And in this class, like next, next time we have a competition, in this class, I split into two sides, okay? So we have the regional competition, okay? So regional competition. So each one of you have a one mini whiteboard, a pen, and a rubber. And this side, okay, so the east and the west, okay, the <laughs> east, you compete first, okay? So I'll give you, that's why if there's a one, okay, I'll give you one minute, and there will only be one winner and one round, okay? And you need to write as many characters as possible. The first time you can even have the character sheet in front of them and they can just write as many characters as possible. So for example, I do this. I said, uh, first one, I, I write that. And you, and she, and he, and farm, and woman, and men, like that. And so, when this round finish, and I'll pick the best one, so you're the winner. Okay, so for example, you're the winner, okay. And the other side, they will be idling because they also want to try. So they will be practicing because next time it's their, their side, yeah? And then we are going to have a three rounds, like going back, backwards and forwards, okay? So if, and then at the end, we have three winners from this side and three winners from this side. So that means by this time, how many minutes have we practiced already? <laughs> Anybody? Six minutes, well done. So, <laughs> so we already have practiced six times and six minutes, like full practice. And guess what? Actually, every time, um, they can write about six characters in one minute or even more. So that's quite impressive because that's a, that means that in six minutes, they've already practiced writing 50 characters, like, like you know, 50 different like times. And even the best winners, you can then pick the six winners, yeah? And the six winners, they are the most able ones. And they practice again, you know, they, they compete again. So you can pick another three winners and another final winner. So that means the more able ones will have got how many minutes of practice? About eight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So... I, I, I really want you to try this, okay, because I find it after this practice, actually the students can remember a lot of characters and they, they even want more. They want to practice more and this is so powerful. And now we're also going to use another game to um, put us back to the learner's shoes, okay. So I'm going to have like two as a pair. Okay, so find your pair. Okay, maybe the same table. Okay. So um, if you have the handle, if you look at the second page, okay, so one person will have slid this, this slide here. Okay, what we're going to do now is a person, okay, we have someone start first. This is called a character guessing game. It's on the board. Oh. <laughs> is it not working? Okay, sorry. It's called character guessing game. So one person split the card and you need to explain to the other person. Do not tell them the meaning. Obviously we are all Chinese. I mean, not all of us <laughs> But I mean, like most of us know Chinese, but we need to pretend we don't know. Okay. So you need to describe the, the image <coughs> or like how many legs or how many arms this character has. I'm going to give you two minutes, okay, to <coughs> guess as many characters as you can. And the other person look at the sheet and you can call the sound or the meaning. Okay, 
Should we start now? Two minutes. When you are actually learning, like like kissing from another person describing. So you are the one kissing. Who is the who was the one kissing the first round? Who was the one kissing the first round? Only two people. Okay. Right. So tell me, how did it feel when you were the one kissing? Um, crazy. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I I didn't know where to start. But yeah. but but it was exciting as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. And who who was the one describing? Yes. So tell us. What do you feel when you are describing the characters? Because we know the characters, so he's trying to avoid describing just physically to see how many parts of the character we have to write on top and bottom. way to describe the character what it looks like. Quite, quite a fun way to see the character in a different way. Yes, yes. Yeah, so my point is, sometimes as a teacher, we have a blind spot, a very big blind spot, because you think, you know the characters already, so you don't necessarily try very hard to let the learners understand how to memorize the characters. And I think this game, although we're not using ink Chinese at all, but you really kind of build the image with the meaning. You kind of build the connection together. Because this will help. I, I found with my students, this really helps a lot. Because in the future, they always remember these characters. And that kind of builds up to, you know, sort of linking the image first and then the pinyin. So that